Now, this is, this is where Dave's. Oh, that's right. This is this is your roof, right? And we showed a, a slide of this earlier. Uh, so this is on the new OHSU building down in South Waterfront. It's the vegetated mat on two or three inches of soil because we require that to get the stormwater, uh, the full stormwater credit. And uh, we didn't put this up to talk too much about the project itself. We were going to talk about at this point. Uh, after questions, we were going to go through and do uh, a project. We we're going to design a project together, we thought. What would you think of designing a project together just up here on the wall? Anyone? No? Okay. Interested? Yeah? yeah sure. Okay. So uh, what we were hoping to do was just... Um, I'm going to take notes. Yeah, just walk through. And really, this is just kind of a collaborative effort. This is designed by committee. And, well, we're going through slides. Um, and we just want to throw out some thoughts or have you guys throw out some ideas about what you'd like to see on um, this project specifically. So actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type some things here. Um, so the building that we have is a 10,000 square foot uh, commercial building that has a uh, flat roof at a 2% pitch. Um, it's about approximately 25 feet tall. And so wondering, uh, what kind of membrane do you guys want to have up there? TPO, okay. Any reasons as to why? Well, it doesn't take a root barrier for one. Okay, no root barrier. That's one advantage. EPDM, less expensive than the TPO. EPDM is cheaper than TPO, okay. Maybe so. And not susceptible to sun now that it's buried. UV uh, protection, okay. Any other thoughts at all? Anybody else want to modify bitumen? No? Let's say that a, uh, right, Visqueen, no. anyone, no. Visqueen? <laughs> Maybe two layers of Visqueen? No? Okay. Let's say that uh, this is a retrofit, which we have up here, and there is already an existing modified bitumen roof on it that we are going to, that is leaking and we need to, to replace or make better. Does that make a difference at all? How many people that wanted TPO before still want TPO? Or how many people still want TPO? Because we're going to have to make a decision, so we sort of it, well, maybe it Any questions or anything? The modified bitumen roof, is, can you put something on there that's just basically a seal then? As um, opposed to, I mean, you said you've got some leaks in it. Can you, can you just like put a, a much cheaper... Another you know, layer, let's say, of modified... Or a layer or a paint on or something that, yeah. that seals that? Uh, let's say there's so many leaks that no. Okay. We just we need to put a new membrane on there. Let's so we'll make it easy. Are we the existing or take off? Uh, depends. What do you guys want to do? What are you recommending? Well, it depends how much weight we, we've got. Uh, good question. That's an excellent question. Yeah, if yeah, we don't. You want to take it off and start over. Let's assume that the building can take the extra weight. Let's assume that the building can take an additional 25 pounds. Or 20 pounds, 20 pounds. Okay, additional 20 pounds. Now, why do you want to take it off? I'm just curious. I don't think that it has the weight load that you're going to need, A. And I wouldn't want to risk the if it has that many holes, then I'd want to inspect the surface. If there was mechanical fasteners popping Perhaps. up or something like that. Yeah, if there's some unforeseen mm -hmm. structural something, mm -hmm. I'd want to see what I'm dealing with. Right. And what about the cost implications for removal and replacement? Do we have a budget? Um, <laughs> no. Or I should, I should ask, do we have a budget? Anyone? Um, so so I, those are, yeah, qu question, yeah. Generally in a situation like this, I just take it off. Remove. Yeah, whether it's, whether it's one roof or three roofs or whatever it is, I just take it off. It's easier to start In the over. scope of things with roof materials, if you're going to put a 50-year roof up there, mm -hmm. You might as well take it off. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you do that? And then you can find all the problems you've got because there will be problems. There'll be broken things. There'll right. be there'll be dry, there'll be something down there that you wanted to see anyway. Okay. So you might as well take it off, dispose of it correctly, and redo it. Okay. You could also put insulation underneath if you wanted to. So That's right. a good idea. Benefit. We could yeah reinsulate. Let's say there's a little bit underneath there and it's not quite to code. Okay. That's a good so so we want to do um, insulation. Well, remove. 
Is that okay, everybody? Everybody, the committee approves? Sure. Yes? Okay. Remove existing, um, insulate, and install what? TPO? Or, no, what's that sound good? I heard an EPM vote. There's some grumblings out there so in the crowd. So give us the pros and cons of uh, EPDM versus TPO. Mm. Anybody have any thoughts on pros and cons, EPDM versus TPO versus PVC? Is there anything you can think of going back to last week that we talked about that would help with, with that? Well, you want to consider the UV area, correct? Mm -hmm. Exposure mm -hmm. on the TPO, correct? Or any of them. Or, yeah. Well, even EPDM? EPDM would need a roof barrier? No. no. Oh, only a pitch roof. That's right. Mm -hmm. the, potentially, from what we've heard, so we're all in the same boat, right? From what we've heard, unless some of you actually have this documented, the EPDM perhaps is more subject to UV than the TPO. And definitely the uh, modified bitumen mm -hmm. is subject to yeah. uh, UV or right. the TPO. So we probably want to go with TPO then. Well, we don't have a budget. Well, Usually the TPO is more expensive. But if it's, all, if it's completely buried, that's the thing, is if it's going up a parapet side, then I'd probably go TPO. If I don't have a parapet or I have flashing, adi adequate flashing over it, mm -hmm. then uh, again, and then one thing is like example to the architects in here is, if I typically spec a 65 millimeter EPDM, can I go with a 45 millimeter EPM and then another loose slave 45 EPDM as a root barrier? Hmm. That's another question. It's a double protection, but one's, 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 it's less expensive because I could actually do a loose slave because now I got all this weight on top. Right. Right. Okay, so we only have 15 minutes to spend thousands of dollars. So, uh, Isn't this how design typically goes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quick, the client's coming, scratch okay, something out. Okay, so uh, TPO. That means yeah. EPDM. EPDM. Okay. Okay, A, uh, modified Benjamin. Anyone? Okay, PVC. So TPO. Okay, TPO. All right. So what about drainage? How are we going to drain this thing? Uh, and we're talking uh, eco roof specifically. Let's let's say the right. there's internal drains to this rooftop. Um, it drains to the middle. Let's say there's I don't know two two uh, vertical drains coming down. And um, how would you guys want to drain this? Would it be via drain mat? Would it be via drain drainage channels? Do we could we use the existing soil for the drainage system? Um, do we do a drainage layer of rock, uh, let's say an open graded rock, and then the soil material on top of that? Anybody have any preferences? Now, also, like you did on the first subject, you're, you asked us questions that helped clarify how to answer mm -hmm. these questions. So please go ahead and do that if you think, hey, wait a minute, I can't make a decision about that until I know something else. If that's, you know. Well, we might want to choose the soil before we choose the drainage. And we might want to choose the plants before we choose the soil. Mm -hmm. yeah. We might want to know the drainage. Exposure. Right. So right. Soil, plants, design, will determine how you're going to drain. That's great. Right, exactly. That's a good point. Since it's a retrofit, I would imagine that the soil depth is going to be shallow, so putting any gravel below it decreases my soil depth. So it would be better to have a porous soil so I have the optimal growth depth growth. You've got 20 pounds per square foot of structural capacity uh, in addition to the, to the snow load. So you've got basically 20 pounds per pound. So I would ask about aspect and, and if, it is, if it's shaded by trees or if it's in full sun, and that would affect the choice of plants. And then I would, if it was in full sun, then I would. Um, so it's full sun. Okay. We'll yeah. just make these decisions as we go. Through. There weren't any trees, were there? Yeah. No trees, full sun, yeah. no shade. Okay. Well, I'd go with the simplest solution, which would be to go with a soil medium that would uh, drain well and choose a, a plant material that would grow well in that. So we have, we have four inches of a well-drained soil mixture and with plant sedum or and, and plant sedum, but with no additional 
um, drainage. drainage system or accessory or anything like that. Well, I would ask about the slope of the roof. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Pretty flat. flat. So, so <coughs> uh -huh. that's that. Way back, That's didn't you say that all of this should start with answering question of O and M first? I did say that earlier yeah. today. So you were actually reversing the priorities here. Yeah. Why are we doing it backwards then? Is this a test? <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't really want to have a test, but we thought something that would help you know just generate discussion, just, just like this. Yeah, this, this, is, this is fabulous. This right. is, you right. know. So that's an excellent question, I think, because I do agree with Ed Snodgrass. What is it that you're, that you, the client, is, what is it that you want this roof to be, mm -hmm. and how much money do you want to spend on taking care of this thing? So in this particular case, we haven't, we don't, we don't have any context as to whether, you know, you're going to have a little spot where you want to be able to get up on this roof because it's your building and you've got access and you want it to well, do. Well, 10,000 square feet is not a little spot. No, it's not. Right. Well, I mean a little spot on the 10,000 square feet. So, yeah. So is it accessible? Do you want to get up there? And if it is and you want to use it, then you might have a budget for maintenance that is more than if it's just a utilitarian roof. So let's say in this case it's a utilitarian roof and you, as the owner, uh, pretty much want it to just be like any other roof that you would put up there. You don't want to have to deal with a lot of stuff. Your, yeah, your access is via a hatch in the roof, right. and you've got to climb up kind of a ricky ladder anyway to get there, so you're really not going to be up there too often. You want the stormwater management benefit. You want the discount on your stormwater fees. You want the insulation of the building. You want a safe, dry building, the typical reason to have a roof, stuff like that. But you don't want any of the fancy stuff. You don't want any aesthetics. It's not part of what you're looking for. You don't want any maintenance to speak of. What is the maintenance? <coughs> so if we said that, now I'm saying that, but maybe you'd like to say, if this is your hypothetical building, well, go ahead. Once you set your O and M at the beginning, and does it allow you to change your course? Because it looks like you actually enjoy a lot more after you see it growing. And so would you want to be very, be very conservative at the very beginning? So it allows for your changing course to accommodate other change of minds? I think it would be a good idea mm -hmm. to be flexible. Yeah. But have something to kind of get you going and then be flexible to what might uh, develop as you are working on the project and your client might actually change their mind. You know, I mean, I was fascinated to see that the, the Academy of Science Building in California, as well as the Ford Motor Company in, in uh, Dearborn, Michigan, have large eco roofs and they have large platform areas on the roof so that people specifically can get up there. So I think uh, any potentially a, a, a development maybe bigger than 10,000 square feet, an owner might say, hmm, there, there could be much more to this than, than I think. And, uh, and thus the utilitarian aspect of it might actually change a little. How do you calculate uh, occupancy low if it's so beautiful after it's done all of a sudden you have a party of 200 people? Do you, do you also calculate that into the room? Oh, you'd have to meet the, the <laughs> structural <laughs> code. Yeah, you, you know you'd have to meet the code for structure. Yeah. <laughs> or do well, right, yeah, so you have to be, <laughs> you have to be careful with re exits and access and everything else. But yeah, that's, uh, so let's keep let's keep moving on this. Do we have a comment here? The project just oh, hold on, go ahead. hold on, Bob. Yeah. Oh well, I I just have an opinion about what we should do. Great. Oh please, <laughs> throw it out there. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any benefit in putting in having grasses because they need mowing and they potentially um, put seeds on your neighbors and fire hazard and so forth. Okay. And I think we should have well draining soil because with 20 pounds, um, we're limited there. Mm -hmm. You four inches of saturated soil and you're right. done. Um, so I would go for sedums and okay. I would go for a huge variety and let them fight it out. So, um, so you touch on a couple of things there. So we have uh, low, I'm hearing kind of a low maintenance design, which is, you know, good in general, but there's, anyway, so I'm just going to put, uh, no grasses. and then plants, I'm going to say um, <coughs> sedum. And she suggested see them earlier. So it and I'm just putting up these aren't final. I, I want to hear comments, but I'm just getting them down. See them no grasses, and then um, 
drainage and soil, you're right, they're linked if we decide to go with a well-drained four-inch mix with no accoutrements for any, any type of drainage. So we're going to say, um, we're going to say uh, via soil media. And then soil is going to be uh, well-drained. Dave, the banker just told us that we have to value engineer it because of the economy right now. No, that's great. That's good. So any thoughts on that uh, value engineering or we anything have, else? We have no mechanical out there, nothing that's going to be needed to be serviced by anybody walking on it. So I mean. Yeah, not in this one, we, we were talking about pathways and that kind of thing. Is that what you're thinking? Or what? Well, I was thinking if you, gotta, if you need a pathway, you can buy it with a drainage left. rock to get both. Use drain rock. For pathways for, and for drainage. And for drainage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. That's kind of yeah. cool. And then you protect your plants, but also maybe get your drainage systems, hoping the pathways are kind of the same way. I kind of like that. And you, you should have a pathway, even if it's only to check the drains. I mean, if that's the only <laughs> right. thing on the roof is the drains, you should check those once a year. So to have a little gravel that helps or facilitate irrigation that, box or something. That would be that'd be good. That's great. Any anything else? Any other thoughts? And now, how would you irrigate it? Because we have five minutes. Yeah, all right. All right. How, what would you do initially, and what would you do long term for this particular project? So long term should be irrigation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, long term, uh, we're going to develop a design term, no irrigation. And then, what about just in the short term, an establishment period? What do you guys want to do? 10,000 square feet, remember. <laughs> so, what do you guys want to do? What's that? Above grade PVC pipe impact. Okay. Above grade, PVC Above grade PVC impacts. Subcapillary irrigation. Subcapillary Sub irrigation. Okay. Well, yeah. time, timing the, you aware the installation. No. What it is? <laughs> you might be able to. <laughs> you might be able to establish it without irrigation if oh. you just plant it relatively early in spring so that it can get rooted while it's still cut. Well, there's an interesting thought. And yeah. It's a, it's so a rehab, so you're, you're not really. Uh, in, you know, it's not driven by the, the whole project. At this well, point. and that's that, that's an excellent point um, because oftentimes with building new construction, those kinds of things, uh, your landscape contractor maybe be the last person on site or hopefully is um, with an eco roof, and maybe you you can't judge that window or get the perfect window for plant establishment. Um, but with a retrofit, you can plant it pretty much any time you want. So why not choose the best time? that would require the least amount of irrigation. So it could be in the fall, which is a good option, or early spring when those rains are going to come through. Um, that's a question. Anything I've seen planted in early spring, it really is susceptible to the, to the hot, dry summer. So yeah. fall. So fall would have For, for okay. our climate, yeah. fall is best. And according to uh, Ed Snodgrass in his book, for the eastern United States, the best time to plant is in the spring okay. because they get those summer rains. So when in fall is the sort of ideal time? Well, you pull off the roof and you put the roof down, but you still have time before you. Oh, yeah. you right, know. right, because you want the dry, a little bit of dry period while you're doing the roofing. Right, work. so right now would be probably ideal. It's still not cold enough that, that things will be frozen instantly. Yeah, to be well, doing yeah. soil and plant insulation. Right. For sure. Yeah. Now, so, so I was just going to say, so that's that's one option either we could do above grade or as maybe an insurance um, for 10,000, because 10, watering 10,000 square feet, I'm thinking hand watering, may prove to be difficult. Um, but you know, you could, you could actually get so up there with some hoses. That's what Chris did on his building. I, I, yeah. It, six hours. He said six hours, yeah, of, of somebody watering and you can, yeah, talk somebody into doing that. Um, so I think there's two, kind of two options there. Well, he pays the guy. So, right, he does pay, <laughs> he does he does pay the guy, right? That employee. guy was stoked. He's just going, yes, <laughs> so I'm up there for water. six hours. <laughs> um, so long-term, no irrigation, and the two ideas we have are um, uh, grade PVC with impacts, and the other one is... Um, is that the same as inline uh, emitters? Uh, it is it's the same technology, but we basically they use about 80% less, 90% less water than sprinklers, and about 60, 50% less water than the standard uh, sub drip 
that's out there. I'm guessing that's one of those networking things. So yeah. Joe will have his name on that yeah. list. How compatible yeah. is that with our well-drained porous soil? Uh, wait, 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 that's off the subject. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, yeah check with him because that's getting into this product, and, yeah. uh, which we're going to have the vendor fair, I hope. I keep saying that. I hope we have it in spring. So then we can get all the, as many products as we can. Why don't you go show your... we just got a few minutes, so we're just going to finish up real quick. Thanks, you guys, for, for doing that. That was a lot of fun. We weren't sure how it was going to go, but you guys have asked. So every time we've finished during the day and during the breaks, we've uh, really just been um, amazed at the kind of questions you guys are asking us which are extremely difficult and then we feel that we're actually collecting more information just question wise from you guys than we're really giving out but um, anyway thank you so much and so I just wanted to finish up so this is my shed um, and uh, so just a couple of things on this one I wanted to just see how e easy it was it is driftwood it's 160 square feet so I'm just under the uh, permitting requirement. Um, is it 200 square feet? And yeah. Well, my garage is only 180 square feet. Yeah. Yeah, 199, right? Um, <laughs> so just a couple of things on this one. I, I really uh, did it um, because I felt that I needed to uh, walk to talk a little bit if I'm going to be up here talking about this stuff. So built the shed. Uh, the windows uh, were recycled from my house. I built the door myself. Um, did just a, a plastic, recycled plastic lumber edging that I knew was going to be kind of exposed uh, to the elements on the outside here and also water and whatnot on the inside. Did a, so I created really a bathtub with that ledger board all the way around this thing and then put um, just a pond liner. So I went to the local pond company um, and they had a 15 foot wide roll that I just was able to peel off and cut at I think 15 by 15 is what I purchased. It was like a hundred bucks, real cheap. Laid that down inside there, um, then had some old flashing actually, some Z flashing that the previous owner had left in the basement. So I was able just to use that as a, as a cap to bring that membrane up over the edge of my, of my kind of ledger board and then I just put that flashing right on top and pinched the membrane to that ledger board trimmed it off with, with an X-Acto blade. And then what I installed for drains here in the corners because it just slopes straight down and of course in my uh, very uh, precise construction I realized that the water drains down and actually drains all the way to this one. Um, and this one is fairly dry but it's uh, not because it isn't level, of course not. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But what, was, what I did is I th thought for a little while about what kind of drainage system I needed for these downspouts. And what I ended up with using was uh, sink drains. So I was standing in Lowe's and had the moment of epiphany because I'm looking and I have a bunch of pieces of pipe and collars and a bunch of other things. I'm just thinking, how is this going to work? And sure enough, I'm standing there and I look up right in front of me and there's a two-pack for sale on sink drains. And I thought... Boy, that looks like, right, because they have, what they have is you, they have a nice big flange that you can unscrew. They have a little lip where you put plumber's putty around it and install it in a sink anyway. So I was able to just take a hole saw and cut out a hole that was the right size, maybe three inch um, or two and a half inch for the uh, hole. Put it down on the inside and just was able to screw that in there and it pinched that membrane right onto that plywood uh, sublayer and created a watertight seal. And then I just put cut some, uh, had the guy at uh, Lowe's cut me some uh, lengths of chain and ended up cutting out the bottom of the sink drain, putting the chain up through and just putting a bolt with some two nuts on it so it would prevent the chain from falling out the bottom of the sink drain. So I have photos of it and stuff, but you know, all in all, the sink drains themselves were like 11 bucks for a two-pack, so I bought $22 worth of sink drains and for all four corners um, and then the lengths of chain were fairly inexpensive. And then uh, planted a bunch of different varieties of stuff, but one of them in particular that I have up there is uh, Lewisia, which is a native wildflower, and it's absolutely spectacular. It's this pink, pink to purplish flower, depending on what kind you have or what what flower it is. And when it uh, gets up behind this uh, log, which is this decomposing piece of wood of old apple tree that I had on my property. Um, it gets up behind that. There's a nice gray background, and then this pink flower comes up behind it, and it's just breathtaking. 
And then, yeah, so this uh, door faces due east. <coughs> and then I have this apple tree that shades a little bit. And then there's a fairly large laurel hedge on the back side. So as that sun comes up and around, it, it gets blasted probably till about 3.30 or so in the summer, maybe about 4 o'clock. And then it starts getting into quite a bit of shade. So um, the back side, I think I'm going to get a lot more shade-loving uh, plant material on the back side there. So this is where I just, uh, it was about a yard and a quarter of soil, and I mixed that in my root in my yard, or in my driveway with a tarp. And what I did place underneath there is uh, a friend of mine, I was helping demo his basement, and he had all this old carpet down there. And so we tore up the carpet, and we're, we were tearing up the carpet pad, and of course the, uh, the previous owners had cats, and anyway, it was really gross. And um, so we tore up this carpet pad, and I'm looking at it, and I thought, well, you know, we we're throwing the dumpster. I thought, well, hey, can I take this? Because I thought that it might be a good material for a um, water retention layer. Mm -hmm. So I put underneath here is a half inch of this carpet pad that had cat pee and stuff all over it, and it <laughs> it stunk. It smelled so bad. But uh, w what I was able to do is let it sit out for quite a while, and it kind of cooked it with the summer heat, and eventually stopped smelling before I put the put the soil on it. But it really it's surprising how much that uh, water, because the well-drained soil still gets rid of the majority of the water, but that um, carpet pad underneath there does a great job of absorbing water, and I think roots are getting down in there. So I think that pumice that I have pulls that water up out of there, uh, out of that carpet pad, um, stays pretty wet. So anyway, that's just the short little story of this roof. And what I have is I took a bunch of um, time-lapse photography of the construction of the, of the um, actual shed and then soil installation and plant material as well so we're going to try and get those up on the website sometime soon so anyway so this, is not, this is not irrigated now that's correct it's yeah all hand irrigated you know a little bit when it was hot i think i did it twice and that was about it uh, but everything seems to be doing pretty well um just e oh epdm uh, pond liner is what it is it's like a 41 mil or something like that and that's it yeah. Do you think a root bear is needed when you're planting sedums for your other roof structures? I mean, is it that invasive that you really need to have a, a <coughs> secondary membrane put down? Um, I just have a pond, pond liner, and that's it. And then the, the, the carpet pad wasn't really for root protection. It was just for uh, water absorption. I'm just thinking for, like, commercial buildings. I think the big thing with other buildings is the, uh, the issue of trees and, and plants with aggressive roots if you don't have an aggressive maintenance program. Because you want to be able to get to those if they can, if they survive with, even without irrigation for some reason, right. then you can have a problem with them penetrating, uh, especially a modified trees, trees that might be some of the They're, some of the natives. For instance, cottonwood. We've seen a lot of cottonwoods on some of the uh, the rooftops near the river. So okay. that are uh, seeding. Okay. Yeah, they're coming up from seed, and okay. so if they come up from seed, they can be pretty aggressive, and so that would be a caution as it relates to, to uh, the issue of roots. And, and then this is my garage that I just redid. And I used black plastic this time. <laughs> I'm not quite done. I've got some finishing work to do. <laughs> and, uh, and I actually have some of these in trays. It was to facilitate getting it off. And Peter left. I forgot. So half of the soil that was up here, I did not put it back on. Uh, so it's in the back corner of my pile. It's a big pile of dirt this big. And uh, so it's a very, now it's a very thin layer of uh, sedum and everything. But again, it's temporary. I'm going to rebuild the garage. But uh, I did stick it back up there. And a lot of that Sorry. material there is just uh, leaves. Uh, the stuff was on the ground, and so the, the trees were dropping on it. And that's the roof that... Uh, just the Morrison. The Morrison. With the cuttings right. in there. So we're going to try and get back up here. This is the one that was only watered once uh, last summer. And this, and this is a more utilitarian kind of roof. And this was taken, what, in the spring? Yeah, we were up there. Yeah, in so spring. So cuttings, jute, mat, and then it wasn't irrigated. And all they have up there, there's no irrigation system except for hose bibs up at this building. And then it was watered once. I think it's 14,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So it took one person four, uh, six, six hours, hours to water it, moving the oscillating sprinklers and then while they were up there they did uh, the uh, weeding and anything else that needed to be done so not bad six hours perhaps that's going to be once or twice a year mm -hmm. that's that's not too expensive 
relatively, depending on how you look at it. So that's it. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you very much.